It's not the things inside my head that keep me going. Don't need someone to throw me money, they should show it. Keep chasing shadows, they're always haunting me. Really active. Alright, very good. Alright. So I know I haven't been uploading for the last 10 days because I went away for a short amount of time But I'm back and we've still got a little bit of footage left over from the gut cleanse that we did So there's two more days ready to go for you guys to watch and enjoy After this gut cleanse series we're going to be doing a whole lot of strength training and stuff that we've actually been implementing this week So make sure you watch this channel and you subscribe if you haven't already And just so you know I put the workout routine in the description below for every single video so make sure you screenshot it and try them when you go to the gym. Anyway, I hope you enjoy the video, guys. All right, all right, all right. It's a gloomy day today, so it's a 14 degree day in Melbourne on the Eddie weather report. So I'm just driving to Atomic Gym in Epping again. So it's Tuesday, and we're gonna go and train with the coach. So we're gonna be doing, not joint session, but I'll be doing PT first, and then Claire's gonna do a session with Nath straight after. So we've got two hours booked in, back to back. No resting. <laughs> Energy wise, today I probably felt the best I've felt out of the whole eight to nine days of doing the cleanse. When I got up out of bed, my brother told me when I started this cleanse that, bro, by the end of this, you'll be bouncing out of bed. And I was like, fuck off, bro, like what? Just bouncing out of bed. Because the reason that I really wanted to do this cleanse in the first place was because I'm so lethargic in the morning that I couldn't get out of bed without having caffeine, like, by my bedside table. Like, on the bedside table, Oxy Shred, Opti Burn, caffeine tablets, whatever it was, just to get me out of bed because I was that tired in the mornings. And that was due to bad gut health. So he was like, man, trust me, do it. You'll get out of bed, no problems. And he gets up at, like, 4 or 5 in the morning every day. And I was like, I don't know how you do it, bro. So today I feel like this was the first day that I felt like that. And... Yeah, I haven't had anything to eat yet, and I feel good, like I'm energized, I feel like I'm just running on natural energy. Had the Chinese medicine this morning though, my little teacup. I've got a little bit of fruit to go before we work out, so a little bit of pineapple, a little bit of... What I get? Oh, I've got the nashi pear at home. Fuck. A little bit of kiwi fruit, and that's it.
five reps, no problem, and then just instant failure. Yeah. And it's like I just barely get into that six, seven rep range. So tell the camera what you're doing. Basically doing no carbs, no fats, no salt all week, but they already know. It's called a bikini diet. Yeah, bikini diet. So just instant failure. It's good, but bro, it feels so energetic now, like in the morning. Do you have much caffeine? Yeah, you just smash it. Yeah. It's important as well. I used to be massive on stimulants and coffee, and you kind of get to have it, having it too much. And then the first couple of days, you take it out, you feel shit. And then after a week or two, you feel good. You sleep better, you wake up better, you have a great day. I'm not a big believer in that. You, you, not everyone needs coffee as soon as they wake up. Everyone thinks they do, but in reality, they don't. Have a coffee when you're tired, not as soon as you wake up. And all you guys out there, what creates the illusion of having the big, grand shoulders that everyone wants to have? I think. It's the top part of the rear part of the side delt, if that makes sense. Right here, that's who you want to pull through. Because right here is what creates the illusion. When you're doing a side raise, most people pull from where it inserts, down here. And they get like a bit of muscle through here. And as it gets to the top, it kind of flattens out. That's because they're not pulling through where it originates from. So when you do the exercise, pull through as high as you can up, up on the shoulder without pulling through your trap. Right row, we're going to be heavier this time, we're 20. Now this exercise again, that right row, let's break these, these sets down to, into one rep at a time. Reset the bottom, stop, initiate the contraction, bang. Reset, stop, pull. We never use momentum. <coughs> and pulling outwards into a right angle. Try, try and keep the pressure through your shoulders. Once we pull straight up, we hit traps. Good, alright, let's do four more, come on. One. Two. Last one. Beautiful. Yes. Do a straight bar? Yeah. Do a straight bar, we'll do a front raise. And then we'll do one more. So, hey, Eddie, come play this one. A lighter weight, so you can just feel the movement through, just feel the weight going through your shoulder with this movement. And then each set, we're going to go progressively heavier and heavier and heavier. As long as you're moving the weight with the contraction of your shoulder, it doesn't matter how heavy you go. In reality, you're going to be you want to go as heavy as you possibly can. Just make sure your shoulder is what's moving the weight. Two more. Understand muscles grow by stretching and contracting. So as long as Eddie's elbow is going a bit long and parallel, the entirety of his interior delt is getting a full stretch and a full contraction at the top. Now one thing with shoulders, I don't mind if we use triceps as well. So when your shoulders are teeing, you can push your triceps a little bit. All right, front raise, what, one or two arms? Together. Two, like, forwards? Yep. Da, da, da. So we actually have two ways of doing this exercise. One way we can't go quite as heavy because it's crazy isolation. The reason why Eddie is better at the hip is because it takes out his center of gravity. It takes out his core. So say it throws off his center of gravity, which takes out his core. And all the weight is right through here. Where we're trying to work. As the weight's a little bit heavier, we're not just working front or interior delt. We're also working front part, side delt as well. 12 to 15 reps. <laughs> Last exercise we're going to pick a fixed machine and all the weight is purely in our shoulders. We're going to pick a light weight and we're just going to go up and down, same pace up, same pace down and exhaust the muscle. Anyway, so we're going to do the flying machine. 
I'm gonna do rears on that, then we'll do that rise, then we're gonna do the weird one. Oh, that one. Not zero, not 90, 45. 45. <laughs> Look at that, the whirlwind, the whirlpool. Good. We just hit all the different strands, so now it's finally starting to take a little bit of shape, considering I've got no carbs and water. It's looking a little bit muscly again. Anyway. Okay, so making sure that our elbows are up on the side of the body. For most of these exercises, they tend to track backwards because they try and fuse their lats. So most people, the elbows will go backwards. As you can see, Eddie's elbows are by the side of his body, which is great. It means he's using just the rear part of his side delt and his rear delt. Most people's elbows would track backwards. Try and keep your arms straight. So in rally, what you're trying to do, try and throw your thumb backwards and try and throw your elbow forwards. And that will keep you straight. And also emphasize a little bit more tension onto that rear delt. Ah. Now believe it or not, that's a very hard exercise to do. The rest of your body is relaxed, right? The only place in your body where I want there to be tension is right through here. This is your hinge point. So this is your trap. There's no, there's no muscle right here at all, and there's muscle right here. Now what I want you to do is slowly up and down when you go down a little bit to here, and when you go up, and we just keep attention. Look straight ahead. Just keep attention, just in there. Good. In your mind, slow it down, slow it down. Think you just think about in your mind. Think about what muscle trying to work, and that's just right through here. Ready? You're doing that. Ready? Always keep your thumbs down, a bit more, more range of motion, a bit lower, a little bit higher, just right there, good. Keep going. Now, when you first start training, what we're doing, we're taking the weight right off, and we're just getting the movement right first. I want you and your mind to understand <laughs> what you're doing right now. <laughs> Look how tiny she is compared to you, bro. <laughs> So basically what we're doing at the moment is movement pattern analysis, seeing how Claire moves, seeing her joints, identifying weak points, and just getting her body to move in the way that Nathan wants her to move. We're not using weights yet. There's no need for it. I felt that feel, huh? Yeah, good. Deep burn or? Yeah, burn. Put your hands like this again. Hot rods? Hot rods. Yeah, hot rods, whatever. <laughs> yeah, hot rods, whatever. It's like a mini Eddie. <laughs> Alright, now, initially the contraction, the rear part is under again, coming up. Now, what I want you to do is, I want you to really think about what you're doing, so start from the side here, and stop, and don't go as fast, grab this. Now we switch, good, one. Two. This, there's no room for your back, this shoulder. Again, this is the hinge point. There's only this muscle here, and it's contracting the weight of your arm. Your arm is what the counterweight is, and the muscle is what's pulling the weight to the back, through that, good. That's it. Keep this down, just bring that up. Good. So what I want, what I want you to do is this. Start here, go as far as you can from here to here with the contraction of that. Don't, you don't need to go all the way back. Go as far as you can backwards, just using that without using this. Okay, so start from here, which is point A. Go as far as you can towards point B. Contraction of that, and then back to the starting point. Ready, set, up we go. Good. And now, like I said before, I don't care if you don't go all the way back. Go back as far as you can with these ones in there. Just up a bit higher now. There we go. Straight up. Good. Straight up. Beautiful. Three more, ready? There. That's fine. One more. Good, beautiful. All right, now with Claire, what we're doing here, because her first time we've trained, it's not about, it, you probably guys were thinking, why are you guys doing like 100 reps? It's not about the rep. So what we're doing, is we're just trying to create a strong signal from her brain to her shoulder to say, okay, we're trying to work the rear part of her side delt right now, and I want her to do as many reps as she possibly can with the right form, 
I understand the movement, and once that movement becomes second nature in her mind, then what we do is we start using progressive overload and increasing the weight week by week. But for now, it's about her understanding the movement pattern. Now, when people say muscle mind connection, what does that actually really mean? So, to put it simply, you have what's called neurotransmitters in your brain. They send signals down your pathway through nerves to your muscles to contract. Now, sometimes, if you've never contracted that muscle before, that signal is going to be weak. So, what you guys can do is you can supplement l tyrosine which is what those neurotransmitters in your brain feed off, and that's going to make that contraction, that's going to make that pathway where that nerve goes down more effective. Yeah. The reason we're doing Team it, Future I, Muscle, uh, I don't know what yours says. It says, uh, anyway. Um, La Familia uh, so, per something. What, so what's Cleo here? happens for a reason. <laughs> Look at Cleo's hand here. See Cleo's hand, how her thumb, keep going. How her thumb's flicking like that. The reason yep. her, her thumb's flicking is because even when she does the exercise that we're doing before, she still wants to use her anterior delt. So what we're doing right now is we're doing a little flick mm -hmm. as the movement goes. And it's making that part right there work. It's very, very hard to achieve exercise when you put that flick in. So doing this flick actually helps utilize the back part, yeah? The rear part of the side. Yeah, yeah. I'll turn off one, flick, two. Flick three, it. Four. Flick it real good. There we go. There you go, it's better. Flick it. Seven. Oh yeah, eight, you can see it working now. Nine, ten, there you go. Feel the difference there? Flick it, yeah. I can just see what's contracting, what's not contracting. And in my mind, I have a picture, I have a photograph in memory. And I, I create pictures. <laughs> I want to picture that muscle being bigger. So next week when you come in, I'm going to remember. Yeah, but he's got a photographic memory. I remember things. <laughs> in his mind. <laughs> right, Udell, right here, it's actually pretty good. Obviously, Eddie needs a trainer. <laughs> she got that rear out. It's a, it's a mandatory at ABW. What we're doing is just going to keep the movement simple. We're not going to do any duos, we're not going to do any holds, any levering. We're just going to use the same tension up, the same tension down, and just making sure that Claire is contracting the weight through her rear delt right here, which she is, which is great. shoulders right there when she does that slight movement by putting her elbow forward and her thumb backwards the density of the contraction is greater through that mm. perfect angles 90 we're degrees we're going to change these shoulders oh yeah from ant shoulders to boulder shoulders <laughs> so we just change this that's this is Claire's side race everyone has a different side race for Claire, the muscle we're trying, when we're doing a side raise, the reason we do a side raise is we're trying to create lateral looking delts. Now, when everyone, some people do a side raise, they might do it like this, they might do it like this, everyone has a different side raise, and it's all dependent on the shoulder. Now, for Claire, it's Claire's side raise. We've got a little bit higher, but essentially, as you can see right now, the rear part of their side delt's working. I've never seen that part of her shoulder blow up like that. There you go. She's got to feel much forward more. Ready? Swoop going, bro. She's got the rear delt side lateral the swoop. Will wins. Three more, ready? Lateral. One. Density. Two. One more. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> Coming up to wrangle. Pulling through here only. So the same thing and then stop. And you check the contraction with the bottom. Now I want you to go as far as you can from point A towards, not two, but towards point B with the contraction of that part of your shoulder working right now. So think about it. Towards the muscle. Now let's go. Good. Beautiful. Now same sort of same thing. As you're coming up, the other one goes forward, the other goes back. Beautiful. Oh, good twist. Look at that. In that lateral head. Twist. Now not everyone needs to do this. The reason why Claire's doing this is because internally her rotation is not great. So if we were to get Claire to do a test right now, from here, and you can really rotate downwards. 
I guarantee her trap and her pet would work harder than her shoulder would or her rotator cuff. So what we're doing right now is to, to just try to help her with her internal rotation issue. We're flicking her thumb backwards and her elbow forwards. Yeah, man. He's really good, huh? Yeah. Did you enjoy that? Yeah. Session. He really analyzed your body and your movement patterns yeah. and he customized the workout and the exercise. Even though we did the same workout and the same exercise pretty much, mm. he customized them to your body and your movement patterns. Mm. And that's what he does. That's why he's so good at what he does. That's why I love him. <sighs> Gotta go and get some fucking food, man. Just running on the good old pineapple diet. <laughs> I'm on the bikini prep. I'm sick of it. We I just want some carbs. Prep. All right, first proper meal for the day. Watch is dead. My life feels like it's dead right now. At midday. Yeah, midday. <laughs> oh, no pepper? cayenne pepper? Oh, yeah. Mm. Go get it, CB. Yeah. Go get it. You got it. I got it. Push. Push. <laughs> oh, yes. The only flavoring mm. that we actually enjoy these days. Videos. Oh, I can't you wait to quantity. just... Two more days and then I'm salting it up. Mm. Yeah. You already put the herbs out, yeah? Mm-hmm. Oh. Is it good? Mm. Oh, yeah. Midday lunch. Oh, wow, you did a good job. Cooked to perfection. It's good, hey. We've got the skin today. Mm. Just for when you're feeling a little bit spicy. Look at that. Perfect. Al dente. You take it off and it's still a little bit raw? Yeah, medium rare. That's mm. how I like it. Very good. Mm. All right, considering we don't have any sweet potato, we need a little bit of extra carb. So we're going to put a little bit of this tropical smoothie mix, which has mango, banana, pineapple, and... Papaya. And that's the way the cookie crumbles. Right, we've got air fryer number two. If you haven't got one, you need to get one. It'll change your life. This is the XL. Oh, an extra XL. oh you can get an XXL now. Oh, oh well. You win some, you lose some. Nah, too, too late. I'm going to use that one tonight. What's for dinner, CB? Steak. With sweet potato. Sweet potato chips, chips or... I don't know, what do you reckon? Or like whole sweet potato. Mm. Or mash. I, ooh, we haven't had mash. Yeah, but it's pretty shit without salt. Yeah, let's not mash it. I reckon let's go chips. Potato chips. Are, yeah. Um, they're the quickest to cook as well. You know what Millie's having? Lamb. Oh, lucky bit. Pasta and vegetables. I'm jealous. It's raining outside, man. It's fucking terrible. Yeah, how shit. It was so nice during the day. No. And then all of a sudden, it just started pouring down. One more day, man. One more day. That's it. You know, like when I when I was at your comp and I saw you eating the donuts <laughs> and the fucking Reese's and shit. Like yeah. I remember what that felt like, but at the time, I was like, I can't relate to how mm. good that must taste. Mm. But now I fucking know. Because I want some sort of taste in my food. I actually want a Reese's cup. This has been harder than peak week, but yeah. we got through it. One more day. These mandarins are the like hardest ones. They're like oh, overgrown really? inside the skin. Oh, so they don't just peel off. you got to pick off little bits what and corners at a time. Ah, I hate these ones. I thought you said you got the soft ones. I want the loose ones. Yeah, the loose ones that just fall apart. Or maybe the loose ones are the old like ones. The skin falls apart. They're the grandma the mandarins. That's what we want. The grandma They're just loose skin. skin. Alright, these going in. Mm. It's pretty good though, once you get to it. Mm. Very squeak. Very what? Squeak? Yeah, squeak. Is that what you said? I said my nonna says it. Oh, really? She goes, oh, very squid. She's not Asian, she's Italian, but that's how yeah. she talks. Oh, the second final supper. Tomorrow night, we're feasting. Not really. Not One more really. night. At midnight, we feast. <laughs> oh, yes. Ten seconds. How is it? It's cooked. Oh, Beautiful. shit. Oh, yeah. Underwater